Good morning, church. Welcome to Redford Aldersgate. I'm Reverend Ben Bauer, and it's a joy to be with you on this beautiful Sunday morning. Friends, if you are a guest that's visiting with us, I want to extend a special welcome to you. We're a church that seeks to make Christ's love visible through inclusivity, hospitality, and service. We're a church where we are black and white, where we're LGBTQ and straight, we're rich and poor and differently abled. We come as we are to worship because God has loved us and invited us to be in worship today. So friends, welcome. Today is also uh, a special uh, day. We have a special guest preacher this morning who's going to be uh, coming to us, and I hope you all uh, really enjoy uh, her sermon, um, and we'll stick around and hear the word this morning. Uh, so friends, let us prepare our hearts and minds for worship. Amen. Good morning again, friends. Uh, I just want to encourage everyone today to please be sure to comment on or interact with our uh, video feed so that you can connect with one another and with us while you're in worship. Also, visitors, be sure to like our Facebook page or like and subscribe to our YouTube cha channel so you can stay up to date as things change around the life of the church. Also, for those of you who are continuing to give your offering or gifts to the church, um, you can do that by sending um, money in through the mail um, by dropping them off at the church. And make sure you call ahead if you want to do that. Or you can give directly online uh, through our PayPal account. There's a link in the description of the video. Or you can go directly to our PayPal account, paypal.me slash redfordaldersgate. Your offerings and gifts uh, help to uh, keep the church going, allow us to do the ministry that we're doing, helping to feed our community and take care of one another during this time. So friends, thank you so much for those uh, for those gifts. Uh, we lift prayers of thanksgiving uh, for all that God is able to do here with us at Redford Elders Gate. Um, friends, I, at this moment, I want to encourage you to, to take, um, take some time to center yourself in an attitude of prayer. Part of the way that we do that here at Redford Elders Gate is through song, and we sing Spirit of the Living God.
Let us pray. Summer is just about halfway over. Some of us have been able to travel, to spend special time with family and friends. But for others, there is a sameness about this season. Lord, you know it brings pressures to to work, to provide for our families. It reminds us of the many people who are ill and who are unable to enjoy some of the fun things that this season is supposed to bring. This morning, Lord, we take a few moments to name our dear ones and situations of pain and loss as we ask for prayers among one another. Some people will remain unnamed because of the anguish we feel about their difficulties, but you are with them, God, every step of the way, even when they don't feel like you care. You are there with them, offering them peace and hope. So let us turn our hearts to you as we silently offer these special people into your care. Lord, you have heard the cries of our hearts. You see our tears and you feel our pain. Be with us all. Give us healing for our broken spirits and uh, and bodies, for we ask these things in the name of Jesus, the Master Healer. Lord, give us confidence as your children to join together in praying the words that Jesus taught us this morning. As we say together, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, and thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Friends, at this time, um, I invite you to, to send yourself uh, um, to, to allow the word of God to, uh, to be upon you as you um, hear these uh, words from uh, Reverend Elise Lowe Edwardson. Uh, she's up in Escanaba Central United Methodist Church, and her scripture this morning is coming to us from the Gospel of John, chapter 14, verses 15 through 21. This morning's gospel lesson comes from the gospel according to John, chapter 14, verses 15 through 21. This is Jesus continuing to speak to his disciples. If you love me, you will keep my commandments. And I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to be with you forever. This is the spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive because it neither sees him nor knows him. You know him because he abides with you and he will be in you. I will not leave you orphaned. I am coming to you. In a little while, the world will no longer see me, but you will see me because I live you also will live. On that day, you will know that I am in my Father, and you in me, and I in you. They who have my commandments and keep them are those who love me, and those who love me will be loved by my Father, and I will reveal myself to them. This is the word of God for us, God's people, and for that we can say, thanks be to God. Pray with me. Almighty God, sometimes we see you so clearly. Sometimes you feel so far away. Sometimes the path ahead of us is clear and sometimes we are daunted 
by the things we must do. God, wherever we are today in our walk with you, whether full of doubts and worries or fears, or whether we are feeling especially close to you, God, may your spirit meet us where we are, your spirit of truth, with a word of life and hope and light for our lives. And may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be pleasing to you, God, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. All right, friends, I have been there. Um, and I, I'm guessing that you've been there too. I'm almost certain of it. Can you think of a time when you knew what the right thing to do was, but the right thing was also the really hard thing, really hard thing. Like maybe the time when you heard people speaking unkindly about a classmate or a coworker, office gossip, classroom bullying, you see it happening. The jabs with words, the, the hurt caused even by mere silence, excluding someone who wants a seat at the table. Maybe the person that the jabs are aimed at is someone that you too struggle to have patience with. And in that moment, you have three choices. You can join the slander, join in the game. You can remain silent and ignore it. Or you can take a stand. You can say something, you can do something and speak up for whoever is being left out or put down. Invite the outcast to the table. We all know what the right thing is, what the loving thing is. And I think we could all agree that the loving thing here is also the hardest thing. Or maybe, like so many in these times, you know what it's like to not see eye to eye with someone. Maybe about sensitive issues, political issues on which the disagreement is so intense that it can be hard to even speak to that person. What do you do? Do you post the snarky, passive aggressive meme on social media, shouting to all the people who agree with you and relishing in their agreement with your opinion? Do you distance yourself from those who disagree with you and not really engage on a deeper level with them? Or, you can do a really hard, messy thing and work towards creating a space, just work towards it, where we listen not to reply or snap back, but where we listen to understand, knowing that every person arrives where they are because of the life they have experienced, because of the story that they live, because of things that have unfolded in their lives. What if we made space to be willing to confront our own bias or the own slant we put on things, our, our own filter through which we see the world? And making space for new understanding, that is a hard thing. Can you imagine if we did it and did it well? We might even find places of healing. I'm not going to paint some picture that that's really easy or messy and works 100% every time with no obstacles. Because I, for one, know that I'm not always good at engaging when I really disagree with somebody. But the hard thing and the right thing and the loving thing are often the same thing. And it doesn't even have to be that intense. Maybe you know what it's like to have someone cross your mind, a friend, a family member, maybe someone you haven't talked to in a long time. And you smile, maybe you're remembering the times that you shared. You care about them, you wonder what they're up to. You could let that moment come, enjoy it, and then pass. Or you could let that moment come and and maybe you offer a prayer to God, asking God to be with them and, and thanking God for the time that you have had with that person and the gift that they are to you. 
Or you can put that love into action. You can send them a quick text. Hey, I'm thinking about you today. How's it going? Or give them a phone call or write them a note. Love is not always the most convenient option. It is not always the most expedient option. Love always asks something from us and is rarely the easiest thing. It's often the hard thing. It's always the right thing. Jesus, in the deepest way, knew that the most loving thing, the right thing, was also the hardest thing. Our scripture reading this morning is part of Jesus's great farewell to his disciples. Some of the words that he offers to them on the night before he dies. He knows that his closest friends are going to betray him and deny him. He knows that he's about to be arrested. The end is near. He's going to be crucified. Jesus knows what is coming. And he takes on the role of a servant, just blowing them all away. They had no idea that Jesus would do something like this. And then call them to do the same. He says, a new command I give you. Love one another. As I have loved you, so you must love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples if you love one another. That is the commandment. Right there. And how does Jesus love us? He loves us by giving his own life that we might know the depth God is willing to go for us. He gives his own life that every bit of sin and brokenness and every obstacle that has been placed between us and God will be buried in the grave and will never separate us again. He gives his life and his own self for us that we might have life and have it abundantly. Jesus does the hardest thing, and he does it because it is the most loving thing. And he commands us to follow his lead. In the very next chapter, the one we read from just moments ago, he reminds the disciples, and I believe reminds us multiple times, if you love me, you're going to keep my commandments. The people who keep my commandments, they are the ones who love me. Let me say the same thing in a few ways to make sure you get it. Loving me means following my commandments. And what is my commandment? That you love others as I have loved you. That the world would know that you are my disciple because of how you love because of how you love, not because of what you throw at other people, not because of the words that you say, not because of the things you say you believe, but because of how you love. That's how, that's how the world will know you follow me. That in fact is how the world will know me. Jesus asks us to love as he has loved us. And the way Jesus loves us reminds us that love indeed always asks something from us. It might ask our time, give up some of your time. It might ask us to give up some of our resources. It will often ask us to give up our comfort, our familiarity, our security. It might even ask us to give up our own hard-held perspective for the sake of learning to understand someone in a new way. It might ask us to be vulnerable. Love always asks something from us. And that's part of what makes it so daunting. That's part of what makes it so hard. That's why the hard thing is often the, the loving thing. The loving thing is often the hard thing. And that's why it's often so much easier, so much more tempting to just be silent or passive. Let those opportunities to love pass us by because it's just too hard to give. 
The good news for us though, my weary friends, because I for one can get weary. The good news for us is that Jesus knows how hard it is. He knows that what he is asking of us is a big deal. It's hard. And so he makes us some beautiful and powerful promises. Jesus looks those disciples in the eye, and I believe looks us in the eye as well and speaks to some of our deepest, most human fears and says, listen, I will not leave you orphaned. I will not abandon you. I am not going to ask you to do the hard thing and leave you hanging. I am going to be with you. In fact, I am sending another advocate, the spirit of truth. The very presence of God kept inside you. That word that Jesus uses to describe the Holy Spirit and the translation we just read, we, well, that word was advocate. The Greek word is paraclete. It could also be translated comforter, counselor, companion. And is that not incredible that the Holy Spirit is all of those things? Because there are times when I cannot find the words to pray. I am too tired. I am too weary. I am too overwhelmed. My mind is spinning so fast, I just can't get any words out. Or maybe my mind is numb beyond words. But thank God for the advocate, the Holy Spirit who prays for me and prays for you when we don't know how, when we don't have words, when we're afraid or just tired. There are times when I need to know that I am not alone. When the hurts of life feel like they might swallow me whole, I need to be reminded of who holds me and who holds this world. Thank God that the Holy Spirit is our comforter, the comforting presence of God within us. And when God asks us to go out on a limb and love in big and risky and powerful ways, praise God that the Holy Spirit is our companion, our companion on the journey. We never walk alone. God tends our weary, worried souls in ways that God knows best how to do. And when there are times where big decisions lay ahead and things are just complex and hard to figure out more than what my human mind and human heart can process, praise God that the Holy Spirit is our counselor, helping us find the gifts that God has placed within us, giving us courage to be who God has made us to be helping us navigate this world that we are in with God's help. With the Spirit's help, with the Spirit's counsel, we can do this one step, one step at a time. Perhaps you, like me, know that feeling sometimes of God being distant. Jesus tells his disciples, in a little while, the world will no longer see me. And sometimes the world feels so confusing and overwhelming and painful that, yeah, I find it hard to see where God is in the midst of it. Yes, pastors can feel this way too. Often I find myself feeling most distant from God, if I'm going to be real about it. It's when I've gotten caught up in being busy when my perfectionist streak is rearing its head, when I am caught up in people pleasing or measuring my worth by my to-do list, I quickly grow more and more distant from God. Maybe you know that feeling too, or maybe you know what it's like for God to feel distant when the answers feel distant. When the hurts of this world are so deep and so raw, and sometimes the only prayer we can find is, God, where are you? I think Jesus knew we might be feeling this way sometimes. Jesus knew we would find ourselves in this situation where it's hard to see God. We just want God to reveal himself to us. Reveal yourself in this mess, God. 
Did you hear one more promise in those words we read? Jesus promises that when we love as he loves, when we keep his commandments, when we love as he loves us, Jesus will reveal himself to us. When we love, we will see Jesus. This is the promise of scripture. When we love, when we do the hard, right, loving thing, we will see God. It might be in the peace that goes beyond all circumstances, when the peace that you feel deep inside, when the world is messy, and you know, I should be worried about this, but God is here. I see God a little more clearly. God's presence might reveal itself in the form of joy, a smile that's put on someone else's face, the gift of a relationship that is growing stronger. God's presence might come in the form of hope and the assurance that there is more to this life than what we see, more to God's plan than what we know. And we can see it more clearly when we step out in love. So if you want to see God, friends, if you want to see Jesus, go love. If you want to feel God's peace, go and love. If you want some hope in your life, go love. If God feels distant, give some love. God is love. And we've been empowered by the Holy Spirit. And we have been commanded by Jesus. And we are already dearly loved by the Father. So receive God's love and give God's love and know and witness the very presence of God. May the act of doing the hard thing, the right thing, the loving thing, change our hearts and make them ever true as we see the face of Jesus. Glory to God. Amen. Thank you, Elise. Let's join in singing our song of response, It Is Well With My Soul.
Amen. Go today into God's world with confidence and hope. God's presence is with you in all that you do. Be those people who plant seeds of comfort and hope. And God will bring about the harvest in due time. Go and care for yourselves, for your families, for each other, for the world. In Jesus' name, let us share in our benediction together. As we say, go in peace, love God, and serve others. Amen.